After a ton of debate on what to use as a base for my next adventure van build, I settled on what you know today as Scruffy. Scruffy is a 2000 GMC Safari mini cargo van, and the main factor why I decided to give up some living space and go with a smaller van was for its powertrain. Its engine has more power than other six cylinder vans from this year, and the main cell was all wheel drive out of the box. Which brings us to today, where I'm stuck with a van having a non functional all wheel drive system. You see, Scruffy tricked me into thinking that its all-wheel drive was working like it should when, really, I think it was on its last leg. It's no harm though, because today we're going to fix that with a nice upgrade and probably with a little less effort than you may think. All we'll need to do the job is some basic wrenching knowledge and to follow a few well laid out instructions. But before we get into the build and how we're going to fix it, it'll help if I briefly explain a little bit how the all-wheel drive systems work on these vans. Basically, the main component that's the subject of today's video is a piece of the powertrain called the transfer case. And it does just what its name implies. It transfers power coming from your motor through the transmission and makes that energy go to your rear wheels or the front when you need it. In Astros and Safaris, there are generally two main transfer case types that were used at different times. One is called a Borg Warner 4472 transfer case and one is called a New Venture Gear NV136. The Borg Warners are on the earlier vans up until about 1997, 1998, and they're generally a good transfer case. They're always engaged in all wheel drive, making this option great for snow driving, kind of like a Subaru. But to put this transfer case into Scruffy would require us to change drive shafts, and the internal parts on these units are starting to become obsolete, so this solution wasn't for me. The NV136 transfer case is on vans from 1999 to 2005, which unfortunately is on our van. This transfer case is not all-time all-wheel drive and is instead electronically controlled, which basically means the controlling computer will need to detect a loss of traction at the rear wheels before engaging the front, which to me, I don't want to lose traction before I have all-wheel drive. This system, the one in Scruffy, is widely regarded to be garbage riddled with mechanical and electronic issues, so this entire all-wheel drive system is what we'll be replacing today. Scruffy's transfer case has both electronic and mechanical issues. A quick look at the fluid from the case is a pretty easy tell. Well, that didn't go well at all. The jet black oil in here should be light blue, meaning these clutch plates in here are toast. Also, the fuse for the all-wheel drive system was blown when I bought it, meaning there's a short in the system somewhere. So if we're not fixing what's here, and we're not using the older style all-wheel drive from past Astros, what are we gonna do? In comes this grimy little piece. This new transfer case is what will turn Scruffy from a mild all-wheel drive van to a true locking, off-the-beaten-path 4x4 adventure van. This is a new process 233C transfer case, and you can find these on S10 pickups and blazers from the mid-90s. They're absolutely everywhere in junkyards, definitely more abundant than a replacement case from another Astro. Using this 233C case will also give us a feature that we didn't have before, which is four-wheel low gearing capability. This is basically like shifting to the granny gear on a mountain bike, giving you more torque at low speeds to do things like heavy towing or mild crawling. There are a couple variants of this case, and the one we're looking for is the three button style with two high, four high, and four low. And to make this transfer case truly drop in compatible, we'll look at the rear shaft where the driveline attaches. There are splines on the shaft, and to work with our current parts, it'll need to have 32 splines. There's a version of this transfer case with 28, and that won't work. The last part of the puzzle we need is a manual shift handle which will come up through the floor right by the driver's seat. Instead of making all this from scratch, we're going to get some help today from Journeys Off-Road. We use their Astro lift kit with great success and they love the install video so much that they reached out to help me with their 4x4 conversion kit, which is something I was already extremely interested in. So a huge thank you to Journeys for helping make this video. In this kit is everything you'll need to convert to true 4x4. The shifter assembly, all the hardware, and even some electrical connections to make our speedometer work properly and even tell the computer to change the shift points when we drop into four low. 
They have all the instructions lined out on their site, so if you take on this project, this is a great resource to keep you on track. Now it's finally time to get to work on this thing. Our first step is to remove the old transfer case. Since we're disconnecting the drivetrain, we'll park on level ground and chalk the wheels since putting this in park won't stop it from rolling once the drive shaft is removed. Apply the rear brake for some insurance and disconnect the battery. Now moving under the van, and we'll take these next steps in a certain order too. There are five nuts that hold the transfer case to the transmission, but one is hidden out of sight, blocked by our transmission mount. We need to temporarily remove this mount to get to the hidden nut. We'll undo these two nuts first, which secure the transmission to the frame. Next, using a jack of some kind, a transmission jack really makes this job a lot easier. But we'll lift the entire assembly, undo the mount bolts, and remove this mount. This allows access to the hidden nut. And once removed, we'll put the transmission mount back in place temporarily, just hand tightened, because this won't be the last time we need to remove this piece. And now we can lower everything back down. Next is to remove the drive shafts. These are actually balanced similar to when you have tires mounted. So to keep vibrations away, it's best to make a mark where it connects to the rear end in order to put it back together in the same orientation. The U-joint is bolted on with a couple bolts and brackets. There's a good chance that these are rusted into place, so you may have to use a pry bar to loosen this joint. Keep your head clear though, because when it comes loose, this could easily knock you out. Got it. Yeah, definitely don't put your head under it. That would hurt a lot. With it disconnected, it literally just slides out of the transfer case now. Just be careful not to mar the shiny end because that could cut the shaft seal and cause a leak. The front shaft is similar. Undo bolts from the front and slide the rear portion off. It's a little more stubborn though because of an internal friction ring thing. So I ended up having to give it a few taps with a rubber mallet to drive it off. Finally. With the drive shafts off, we can remove the last piece before unbolting the transfer case itself. On the driver's side, there's this crash bar support that won't bolt back up to our new transfer case. This is held on by two large bolts, and an impact gun makes easy work of these, but they may put up a pretty good fight if you're using just a ratchet. The other end of this bar is connected to the side of the engine block by one large bolt. It's pretty easily accessed from the bottom now though, since the drive shaft is out of the way. We'll unplug all of our electrical connections and begin to drop the case. Putting our jack back into place and raising it up just high enough to touch the case without bearing any weight, we can remove the remaining four of our five nuts. The transfer case isn't just going to fall off once they're removed though, as the studs are all still there, and on the inside, the main transmission output shaft is still mated to the case. But with a little wiggling and avoiding crushing any digits, this case will finally make its way off of the van and onto the jack. Our project is now halfway done. There's just a couple things we need to do to our new transfer case before we put it in. First off is to clean the mating surfaces of any old gasket material. You can use a fresh razor to do this, but be careful because you can easily gouge the soft aluminum this way. But if you take your time, it works really well. For some reason, the wrecking yard I bought mine from removed all the mounting studs. But using two nuts tightened together, we can remove the studs from the old case and transfer them onto the new one. I'm adding a small amount of Loctite as I put everything together as this is going to be a high vibration section of the van. Next comes in our kit from Journeys. A part that is a super common failure point on any transfer case is the electronic motor that switches gears called an encoder motor. We're taking this failure prone part off and replacing it with a manual shift lever increasing long term reliability. One of the main engineered portions of our Journeys 4x4 kit is the bolt-on shifting linkage. Not only does this linkage give us the ability to use a hand lever, but this is what has the built-in electronics in it to tell our computer to change shift points in 4 low. Installation is super easy, starting with the thrust washer, then the linkage arm, followed by the brass washer, then the cap assembly. Be sure to plug in the middle socket before screwing in the bottom bolt so you can attach the ground wire. Then using the supplied wire connections, attach the long wire to the plug as this will run up to the powertrain control module in the engine bay. Back under the van, all the wiring we undid can either be ripped out, or if you don't want to like myself, you can just tie everything up out of the way, minus one plug. Find the mail plug with the green and purple wire, because we'll be reusing this. This goes to the VSS or the variable speed sensor, which is what makes the speedometer work. Snip the plug off and install the one supplied with the kit. 
I always add some dielectric grease before shrink wrap to prevent corrosion over time. And you can solder these instead for a more professional job, but I just went ahead and used the supplied connectors. Now for the scary part, we're cutting a hole in the floor. If you look straight up from where the front drive shaft was, you'll see a square shaped indentation. This is an old stamp from the floor shifter on the earliest models of Astros. You can see how I roughed in a square guide for the mounting hole. The linkage that supplied is forgiving, so don't sweat using pinpoint accuracy. For this part, 100% use safety glasses even if you don't usually, which you should. Metal shards are about to fly everywhere. Using a 2.5 inch hole saw, we'll drill up through the bottom of the floor all the way into the cap. Now it's time to mount our shifter, and it needs to be mounted from the bottom up. In the kit are self-tapping screws, so just hold it squarely in place and drill away. Just like that, our shifter is as solid as a rock and ready for some aggressive yanking. Lastly, we'll go up top and install our shifter boot with another set of supplied self-tapping screws. We're getting super close to being done now. The next step is to get the transfer case back in. We'll put a small, even amount of gasket maker on both mounting surfaces of the transfer case and the transmission. Since the case has the studs, we'll put the supplied gasket on here to keep it from moving as we muscle this thing back into place. Lift the transfer case back up with the jack, and the trick is to get the main output shaft of the transmission to line up with the transfer case first, then the studs will follow. Once it's slid into place, add and tighten the four exposed nuts in a star pattern to secure the transfer case in place. Now we'll need to lift and remove the transmission mount again and attach the last hidden bolt. Make sure all of our hardware up to this point is torqued down properly with some Loctite. We can also reinstall the rear drive shaft at this point, and be sure to match up the marks you made. We'll leave the front shaft off for now because we'll need the working room. Since everything is in place, we can now hook up our shifting linkage. After plugging in our VSS sensor, it's time to run the four low signal wire up to the engine bay. I went ahead and ran it along the frame, making sure to strap it away from moving parts and hot exhaust. When we get it to the front, this is where it gets a little model specific. But for years 1996 through 2000, we'll be unplugging this bottom left black plug from the main vehicle control module. If you inspect these plugs closely, you'll see that they're numbered. From our application, Vans 96 through 2000, we're adding this to the pin slot number 23. You can check the journey site if you have a different van year though. To get the pin in, take off this translucent black cover. It just snaps off on both sides. Once the pin is in, replace the cap and back cover and reinsert the plug into the main control module. While we're up here, we need to remove the fuse for the electronic four-wheel drive since we won't be using it anymore. It's labeled ATC in the underhood fuse panel. Now reinstall the front drive line the reverse way you took it off and enjoy the fact that you have one step left. When you buy components like these from the wrecking yard, they're usually drained, so don't drive off without topping off fluids. In the back of the case, you'll see two plugs. The bottom one is the drain, and the top one is the fill. Add fluid to the fill plug until it starts to run back out. That's when you know it's full. This case took about 1.25 quarts. So, Scruffy's all fixed up. If the tires spin, with the swing of a lever, all four wheels will claw for traction. This means that there'll be less worry for me about getting stuck in a shallow ditch or stranded in some snow. Though we can't go too crazy off-roading because Scruffy doesn't quite have the clearance for that. But now, like always, we'll tally up our project cost. From our last episode, we left off at $3,225 all in so far for this build. Now, this is kind of a gray area as Journey's off-road supplied the 4x4 kit for me for free. While this was no cost to me, I'm going to include it, that way we get an accurate project total. The transfer case itself cost me 200 bucks, which you could probably get for cheaper, but it was already on the shelf and ready to sell. The 4x4 kit retails for $274. We'll round that up to 300 after buying fluids and a few odds and ends for this project. So the total 4x4 swap would cost $500, bringing our total up to 3725 bucks inching closer to that $5,000 goal I had at the get-go. It might be close, but I'm still hopeful. If this video was helpful or you just enjoyed watching, give it a like. And to keep following along with Scruffy's progress, click subscribe. Thanks for watching me wrench on the van today. There's going to be plenty more to come soon. But until next time, keep that rubber side down.